In the next three movies, we answer this question about force, work, energy, and power. And we use this question as a way to develop our understanding of these concepts and their relationships. In this first movie, we answer the first three questions, and in the next two movies, we look at two ways of answering question four. Make sure you watch all three movies as we look in detail at the relationships between these concepts from multiple angles. In this question, we have a 200 kilogram roller coaster car moving with its engine switched off between A and B, and then putting its engine on to make it move from B to C. The whole surface A to C is rough, so friction is present. We're told the car's speed at A and B, and from B to C it moves at a constant speed, so the speed at C is the same as at B. We're told the height of A and C above the reference level, and one of the things that we need to calculate is the height H of B. We also know how much energy was dissipated because of friction between A and B. First, we're asked what a non-conservative force is. We know we get conservative and non-conservative forces. Both of them can do work as they act through a displacement. But the difference between them is that for non-conservative forces, the amount of work that they do depends on the path taken while applying such a force. Whereas for conservative forces, the amount of work does not depend on the path taken while applying such a force. Non-conservative forces cause changes in mechanical energy. Friction is an example of a non-conservative force. It's a dissipative non-conservative force. And we're told here how much energy it dissipates to the environment. In other words, it takes that energy out of the car and converts it into diffuse forms of energy like heat and sound in the environment. And because that energy has been extracted from the car, the car's mechanical energy decreases. In other words, the sum of the car's kinetic and gravitational potential energies decreases. We can give this in an equation. The work done by non-conservative forces equals the change in mechanical energy, in other words, equals change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy. We're going to use this to help us calculate this unknown height in a moment. But first, we go to the next question. And we see that we are asked to calculate the change in kinetic energy of the car between point A and point B. We are asked to calculate the change in kinetic energy from point A to B. And that's a very easy question. Final kinetic energy, in other words, at point B, minus initial kinetic energy, in other words, at point A. We know that kinetic energy equals half mv squared. m is 200 kilograms. v is what changes. The mass doesn't change. So we can rather write this as half m, which doesn't change, multiplied by v final, which is vb squared minus va squared. And then we just substitute. m is 200 kilograms. Velocity at b is 2 meters per second. And that must be squared minus velocity at A, 4 meters per second, and that must be squared. So actually the only tricky thing about this is the calculator work. If you put this into your calculator exactly like this, with the brackets, everything will be fine. Because the calculator will then realize that it must do the brackets first. It must first do, well, it must first do the squared. It must do 2 squared and then minus Four squared, And once it's got that difference, only then multiply that by 100. But if you're not careful and you just put it in your calculator, a half 200 times 2 squared minus 4 squared, it will do this part first. And then from that, 
subtract, four squared, which is not the same thing. So either we must do this part ourselves first and then multiply it by 100. We can just do that part in our head. Or we must do it exactly as it is on the calculator. Any correct calculation on our calculator will give us minus 1,200. And what are we speaking about? Kinetic energy. All energy is measured in joules. Why minus? Does that mean direction north, south, east, west? No. Energy is a scalar. That does not mean direction. That means a decrease in kinetic energy, which makes complete sense because we can see that the speed has decreased. So the kinetic energy has certainly also decreased. Why has it decreased? Well, one reason is because we've got a dissipation of energy. So the mechanical energy has decreased. The amount of mechanical energy has decreased. We can see that through the dissipation through friction. But of course, we also don't know the other component of mechanical energy at this stage, which is gravitational potential energy. How has that changed? And so this takes us to the next question. We've got to find out what H is. Now, we know that H is related to the gravitational potential energy at B. And we know also that we have to use energy principles to find out what H is. So obviously, gravitational potential energy has to come into this. We know that the work done by non-conservative forces, which includes friction, in this case, that is the non-conservative force, friction, that equals to the change in mechanical energy of the system. In other words, the sum of the change in kinetic energy, which we've just worked out, and the change in gravitational potential energy. Now, we know this. We know this. And if we find this out, built into there is H. And so then we can find H out. So, let's substitute what we, what we know. Now, in this question, you have to be careful about signs. But the sign doesn't mean direction. It means increase or decrease. Now, friction force always does negative work, meaning it decreases the amount of energy that, in this case, that car has. So we were told that it's 3,4 times 10 to the power 3 joules, but it's negative that. Why? Why? Because it's negative work that was done. That's, that's the amount of energy that came off. But negative work of that magnitude had to be done in order for that amount of energy to be dissipated. So this here must be a negative. Negative 3,4. 0 times 10 to the power 3 joules of work was done by friction, which is a non-conservative force, in order to dissipate that amount of energy. And that equals the change in kinetic energy, which we've seen is negative 1,200 joules. And the reason why that is negative is because the velocity decreased, so obviously the kinetic energy did too, plus change in gravitational potential energy, which means final, in other words, it'd be gravitational potential energy minus initial, in other words, at A. Okay, so let's just speak about this, what's happening here. Gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh. The mass is 200 kilograms. G is 9,8 meters per second squared. Those don't change between position B and A. It's only the height, mgh, the h part, that changes. So we can simplify this to be mg, which remains constant, delta h. That's the thing that actually changes. Now, we could go and actually write what delta H is. It's H minus 10, final height minus initial height. But it's simpler as far as the algebra is concerned if for now we just keep it as delta H and then later just remember that is not actually what we were asked. We were not asked delta H. We were, we were asked H. So we're going to have to then sort out that later. But let's just start off like this. So that's equal to... 
minus 1,200, of course, joules, but maybe let's leave that out for now, plus 200 times 9,8 delta H. So now we need to solve for delta H. So we must just, of course, get our algebra right. What are we going to do? We're going to add 1,200 to both sides, which in effect looks like taking this one across and changing its sign. And then we're going to divide both sides by this so that delta H is on its own. Let's do all that. Notice, plus 1,200. You must be careful with your algebra. It's very easy to get your signs wrong. And I'm just going to immediately divide through by 200 times 9,8. Minus 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 plus 1,200 equals divide by 200 divide by 9.8 equals minus 1,12. Don't clear your calculator. What are we speaking about? Change in height. That's in meters. Why minus? That means that from the beginning to the end, it dropped. So B must be lower than A. How much lower? It must be 1,12 meters lower than A. In other words, 1,12 meters lower than 10. So what is H? Well, it's 10 minus 1,12 meters. And what is that? Well, let's just take what we have on the calculator, add 10, and we get the answer. 8 comma 877, well, we rounded off to 8,88 meters. Don't forget to watch the next two movies in this three-part series for a discussion of question four.